Abstraction encoding is like a double-edged sword. Sometimes you use it to make your life easier, right? Like when you hide all those messy details to keep your code clean and organized. But here's the thing, my friends. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. I've been there. Overdoing abstraction can turn your code into a tangled mess, and you'll spend hours trying to figure it out. Abstraction in coding means simplifying things. It's like using a TV remote. You press a button and it works, but you don't need to know how it actually works inside. In programming, you hide complicated stuff in the details like arrays or linked lists, making it easier to manage. You use only what you need. In languages like Java and Python, you create abstractions using classes and functions. It's worthwhile because it enhances code clarity and reusability. But beware, because too much abstraction can make debugging a real challenge. So finding the right balance is essential. Abstraction focuses on essential information while ignoring unimportant details. It simplifies complex things to make them easier to understand and work with. Simply put, abstraction means hiding complex reality while exposing only the necessary parts. For example, when you're driving a car, you focus on speed, fuel and direction rather than how the engine works. The car's internal implementation and complex logic are completely hidden from the user. Actually, you don't need to know how the engine is getting started or what components your car has. Or for example, an ATM machine. We perform all operations like cash withdrawal, money transfer, retrieval of receipts, etc. But we don't know the internal details of an ATM machine or how any of it works inside. I mean, if you're an engineer that designs ATM machines, then sure, but that's not the case for the rest of us. But anyway, that, my friends, is abstraction. Now, let's explore some actual coding examples. In this code, we created a list of numbers containing integers 1 to 5. And then it calculates the sum of all the numbers in this list using the built-in sum function in Python. Then the final result is stored in the variable result and we print it on the screen. This is high-level abstraction because we calculate the sum of all integers without worrying about how the values are iterating using the for loop or how the sum is being calculated. The logic is basically hidden and stored at the back end as a function. We just call the function when we need it. In this code, we made a function named calculate sum that takes a single argument. We pass the numbers list to function as an argument, and it then iterates its values one by one using a for loop and calculates the sum. At the end, we return the final value, the result. It's a low level abstraction because in this case, the code accomplishes the same task as in the previous example, calculating the sum of a list of numbers. It does so with lower level abstractions by manually iterating through the list and accumulating the values. This code provides more insight into the implementation details. The logic is hidden in the code, but still easily accessible. We can achieve abstraction in programming languages like C++, Java, Python, and JavaScript by using classes, interfaces, and modules to encapsulate the code. We use the keywords private, protected, and public to control visibility. These keywords are called access modifiers. We use abstract classes and interfaces to achieve high-level abstraction. Now, here's a quick rundown of access modifiers and abstract classes. Private. Variables or methods marked as private in a class are only accessible within that class. They cannot be directly accessed or modified from outside the class. This helps hide internal details and ensures data integrity. Protected. Variables or methods marked as protected are accessible within the class they are defined in and in any subclasses, inheritance. They are not accessible outside of these classes. This provides a limited level of access control for inherited properties or methods. Public. Variables or methods marked as public are accessible from anywhere in the program. They can be used and modified freely by other parts of the code. Public members are essential for interaction between different parts of a program. Abstract. Abstract classes are classes that cannot be instantiated or created directly. They serve as blueprints for other classes and may contain abstract methods or methods with no implementation. 
Subclasses must implement these abstract methods, making abstract classes a way to define common behavior while leaving specific details to subclasses. In the provided Java code, public methods such as eat are accessible from anywhere in the program, both inside and outside the class. For example, mydog.eat is accessible in the main class. Protected attributes like name are accessible within the class they are defined in, the dog class, and any subclasses, if any. In this case, you can access mydog.name within the dog class and its subclasses, but not directly from the main class. Private access is not demonstrated in this code, but private members would only be accessible within the class where they are defined, such as private variables or methods in the animal or dog class. Abstract methods, like make sound, are defined in the abstract class animal but must be implemented in any concrete subclass, such as dog. In the main class, you can call mydog.makeSound because it has been implemented in the dog class. Abstraction enables developers to work with complex systems without having to understand every tiny detail, which makes it easier to develop, maintain and debug code. The smartphone interface abstracts every tiny hardware and software component inside the device. Users interact with icons, buttons and apps without needing to understand the complex processes happening in the background. Developers can create abstract classes or functions that can be used in various parts of a program or in different projects. This saves time and effort and reduces the likelihood of errors. Instead of repeating math operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in various parts of your code, you can make a single calculate function. This function takes two numbers and an operator, saving you from duplicating the math logic each time you need to do a calculation. Abstraction splits a system into parts, data, looks and rules, making code easier to manage. In a web app, MVC or a mobile viewer controller separates data or a model, presentation, view and logic controller, making code organization clear. Abstraction is key in APIs and libraries. APIs offer clear functions, shielding users from details. Libraries simplify complex tasks for developers to reuse. Consider a weather data API. Developers can access weather information for a location using simple API calls without needing to understand the intricacies of collecting, processing and presenting the weather data. So here's the twist. Currently, we're describing a lot of abstraction and its number of advantages. Code reusability, scalability and many more. So why do we mostly hear that abstraction is making our code worse? While abstraction offers many advantages, it can make code worse when overused or misapplied. Excessive abstraction can lead to unnecessary complexity, making it harder to understand and maintain code. Developers may face challenges when abstraction becomes too layered or when abstractions leak, exposing internal details. So striking the right balance in abstraction is essential for code readability and maintainability. Like, imagine calling a customer service hotline and being greeted by a complex automated system with numerous menu options. Excessive abstraction in the form of too many layers of automated menus can frustrate users, making it difficult for them to reach a real person and leading to a poor customer experience. In this example, each menu option has sub-options, creating multiple layers of abstraction. While the system aims to guide users to the appropriate department, excessive abstraction can confuse callers, making it challenging for them to reach a real person and leading to a frustrating customer experience. Suppose you have a simple task like adding two numbers, but you create an overly abstracted function with multiple layers of indirection and unnecessary complexity. This can make the code harder to understand and maintain. This code adds two numbers using unnecessary abstraction, making it less readable and efficient. The add numbers function could directly perform the addition without calling another function, improving code simplicity. So it's proven from the above real life and coding examples that sometimes over abstraction really makes your code worse. Using abstraction in your code is a valuable tool that simplifies complex tasks and helps us create efficient solutions. It enables problem solving, automation and innovation. 
However, just as excessive abstraction can make code worse by introducing unnecessary complexity, coding can lead to problems when we overcomplicate things, write convoluted code, or add unnecessary features. The key is to strike a balance between using code and abstraction effectively. To solve problems without creating new ones, simplicity and clarity in both coding and abstraction are essential to maintaining code readability and performance.